host of heaven to sing hallelujah to your neighbor. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Worship you. Worship you. Worship you. Worship him, worship him. Magnify the name of Jesus. Magnify the name of Jesus. Worship him. Exalt him, brethren. Exalt the Lord. Give him all the glory. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. His mercy endure forever. Father, we worship you. Ancient of days, the Lord of hosts, everlasting Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Amen. I want to hear a big amen from the people of God. Amen. Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory for your mercy. We are alive today because of your mercy. And it's a big privilege to be able to come to your presence again. Please accept our heart of gratitude in the name of Jesus. Even if your people refuse to say amen. Father, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Today, Lord, please bless your word in our heart in Jesus' name. Within this very little time, Lord, take control in the name of Jesus. By your word, touch us as individuals and touch us as families in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Please take your seats. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, choir. Uh, let me quickly invite... Uh, the people that will join me for on this table as we discuss on the ever increasing family we have very short time we don't have more than maybe six six minutes to discuss on this because of our very very short time that is left please welcome with me mommy almost guy to please come and join me here i say welcome with me please put your hands together 
they can cook free. Please join me here. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Now during the first service, we discussed on the theme of this program. That is the family weekend that we are bringing. Uh, today is the grand finale of the program today. So we have been discussing on the ever-increasing family. The ever-increasing family. And just like I said during the first service, a family is a very, very special institution. It was instituted by God. It was founded. And God has so much interest. If you see any family that is having serious problem, it's not likely that the people within that family will prosper in anything. Believe me. If you see anybody who doesn't have a good family, and it looks as if the person is progressing, it's a matter of time. But if you see anybody from a good family, they are settled, they have joy, they have peace. Even if things look rough at the beginning, it's a matter of time. It's a very, very good thing that God has done. Like I said, we may not have much time during this second service because, uh, but the little we can do, uh, we will do it. Uh, we may not have more than maybe six, six minutes just summarize. The first thing that we want to do is to discuss, the first person we discuss with us, that's our mommy here, about what are actually the things we are trusting the Lord for in our families. If you don't have focus, there is nothing that is driving you. So within the very short time that we have, she's going to uh, discuss what are the things that every family must trust God for. What are the things that must be driving the families? Things that we are looking at that God do this for us, even as we believe God for ever increasing family. God bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, sir. I want to say a big thank you to the pastorate for this opportunity. Good morning, everyone. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Some of the things that every family must trust God for. Uh, number one, every family must increase numerically, ever increasing numerically. But before we explain that, I want us to quickly look at Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 1. The word of God says, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. And except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but, wicked but in vain. What are we saying? Every family that is rooted in Christ, godly family, must put their trust in God. And as you trust, you will increase in wealth, you will increase in all around prosperity. All you need to do is to go to God in your place of prayer, telling him to take charge. And he will do that which he has promised in the name of Jesus. Another ever-increasing benefit of every Christian home is peace. You will enjoy the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding. Just call on him. Just focus on him. Just ask him, Father, let thy will be done in my home, in my family. Let your peace reign. Irrespective of all the challenges, all the trials, whatever may come our way in this race, in this home, in this family, in this institution that you have ordained, let your peace and your peace alone reign. And if you depend on him, his peace will surely be your portion in the name of Jesus. Another interesting benefit of ever increasing benefit of a family is the ever increasing security. You as you all know, safety is of the Lord. And like from the verse we read, except the Lord watcheth over a city, the watchman worketh all but in vain. It is the Lord that keepeth his people. Is your keeper, is your deliverer. All you need to him is do is to call on him. 
depending absolutely on him for your safety and you are guarantee of your sure security because Isaiah 9 Isaiah 49 25 what does it say the word of God says that God has promised that it will contend with them that contend with us as many that raise the standard against us if you call upon the Lord it will arise on your behalf and it will defend you and it will give you victory without a fight in the name of Jesus Another ever-increasing benefit that every family that is rooted in Christ will enjoy is that there is ever-increasing joy. You have joy in your home. Joy unspeakable. Your joy will overflow. Just trust in Him. Call on Him and let Him do that which He has promised. And remember one thing that He has said in His Word. In Psalm 16 verse 11, he said, Thou will show him, he will show you the path of life. And in thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. The Lord will perfect everything that concerns as many that put their trust in him for their joy to be full in the name of Jesus. Another aspect of this benefit, when you put your trust in God, those things you are likely to enjoy is ever increasing divine loving kindness and mercy loving kindness and mercy when we say divine loving kindness and mercy we are talking about the goodness of god and the mercies of god all good things and perfect gifts comes from god every blessing we enjoy today is because of the grace of god he has endowed us with all the good things of life in every family, in every home, that you are blessed and you are highly favored is because of the presence of the Lord in your home. So the divine loving kindness of God is encompassed, it is, is nev it never fails. So all you need to do as a family is to depend on him for his goodness and for his mercies. Psalm 103 verse 17 says, But the mercies of the Lord is for everlasting to everlasting. It does not come to an end, only if you don't want it in your home. If you really want it, the Lord is able and capable to release it upon you and you will enjoy it to its fullness in the name of Jesus. And lastly, another very interesting aspect of uh, ever-increasing benefit in our family is the ever-increasing blessings of God. The gift of God is without repentance. The blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Whatever the Lord has given to you, it is permanent and it will remain permanent with you to enjoy. All you need to do is to continue trusting in Him, believing Him and looking unto Him for His blessings to continually be your portion in the name of Jesus. Psalm 112 verse 2 to 3, it says, His seed shall be mightily upon, His seed shall be mightily upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3. White and riches shall be in their home, in their houses, and his righteousness endured forever. What are we saying? We are talking about the ever-increasing family. We all came from one or two families. And you know, family is, is an institution that is ordained by God and is instituted and constitu constitute of either people by marriage by adoption or by blood anyhow wherever you come from it tells well of your background your family your foundation and all these benefits when you hold on to god you anchor on to god you are likely to enjoy them and have an ever increasing family all around be it numerically in the area of your joy your peace your security and the blessings of the lord may the lord bless his word in our heart even as we put to practice all that we have learned in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together for our mommy here. The Lord bless you, ma. Let me quickly pray for somebody here this morning. Whatever you are trusting the Lord for in your family, the Almighty God will release to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mommy has discussed with us about what we should trust the Lord for. Trust God for the joy of the Lord. If in your family you know deep down within yourself that the joy of the Lord is not there, 
you discover that the peace of God is not there. You discover that a lot of things are not there that are supposed to be there. Don't, don't lose your faith. That's one of the reasons why God has brought us together to learn from him again so that our faith can be lifted. I pray one more time. Whatever you have lost in your family or that is not there, the Almighty God will release back to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, when we are talking about what we should trust God for, just like I said during the first service, it's not a magic. The principles of God is, is most of the time he will say, oh, you want me to do this? You too do this. How do we arrive at this? How do we go about it so that we'll be able to have the peace we are trusting God for? What do we do so that we'll be able to have the joy of the Lord so that we can increase even numerically? Our daddy here will be discussing that with us. Let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time. The Lord bless you as you listen. Thank you once more, Pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. Now to enjoy the benefits of the things we are trusting God for, number one. Your family must please God increasingly. In as much as you want God to bless you, you have to keep pleasing God steadily, continuously, increasingly. The things that will not hurt God, we must not commit sin and all that. And what will you benefit from this? In Proverbs 16, 7, the Bible says, When a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to turn and be at peace with him. So when we please the Lord deliberately, increasingly, we don't need to come and start to pray for our enemies to die. Only himself, because even God is interested in those enemies. Instead of sometimes killing them, he turns them to be at peace. He forces them to be at peace with you. So that's one benefit. Number two, your family must remain continually in unity. Unity is key. If we want to enjoy God's peace, God's security, God's blessings, the peace of God, has, the unity of God has to be there. Unity of purpose, unity of our objective, whatever we are doing together. Because in Psalm 133, the Bible says, where there's unity, there's the command of God's blessings. So God will command his blessings into our marriages. Then number three, increasing devotion to God. We must continually be devoted. Draw our families to God. Make them to serve the Lord. Now in Joshua 24, 15, we heard Joshua, we saw there when Joshua gathered the entire people of Israel. He said, choose ye this day whom you want to serve. What are the gods of your fathers or the living God? That has called me and my household, we would serve the Lord. That was one thing he did with all determination. And it takes determination. The father, the mother, to make sure. It's not all about giving the children the best of education. Sending them abroad and all that. Their devotion to God is key. Otherwise, sometimes we end up wasting the money in their uh, uh, education. Now, our mommy has talked about increasing trust. Let me jump that one. Increasing knowledge and fear of God. In Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7, you hear Joshua, uh, the Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel, you have to teach your children these precepts day and night when they are sitting, when lying down, when moving. Talk about it. Read it to them. So now this is a duty to parents. Mother, father, we have to tell our children, we have to tell our loved ones about God. We have to, they have to increase in the knowledge of him. If a child is not rooted in God, his foundation is shaky. He needs to grow with the knowledge of God and we too as parents. Now, number six, which, are, which has a lot of ingredients that I'll dwell more on, is in, increasing intimacy. Increasing intimacy and the first part of it is that we need increasing social intimacy. Social intimacy in the sense that we need to play and have fun more and more together, become better and more intimate friends daily. Now, in Proverbs 18 verse 24, the Bible says, A man that had friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now, in, in, in marriage and family life, you are not just marrying wife because you want to marry wife. Your wife, over time, has to become your friend. You have to be there for her. Your husband has to be your friend. Sometimes, if you are a man that is doing maybe office work and she's a businesswoman, stroll in there and see what is happening. Uh, maybe in the morning, she's shedding her business, help her and shed it. All those things build intimacy. Not that all your lifetime you don't understand what your wife is doing. We've seen situations where maybe a partner is lost. And what the other partner was doing just gets into extinction. Because the other partner did not follow up in any way at all. 
So number two, part of that intimacy, ever increasing physical intimacy, spending more time, time together more and more, becoming more and more responsible at home and doing things together. We have to be there. We have to talk to each other. There are a lot of men that, you know, sometimes we, some men feel women's story are boring. I will come and start giving. Listen to that boring talk. There's something interested in it. The women want you to listen to them and they want to talk. Even when you are not, you are not, uh, you are tired, just try to listen. Talk it over. Hear her story. Hear what happened in her shop. Hear what happened in his office. All these things are ways of building intimacy. Now, about increasing spiritual intimacy, now you have the place of the family altar, the, the personal altar, the family altar, then being able to share our deepest and most personal prayer points more and more. We need time to develop our spirituality, one as individual, the husband, the wife, the children separately. We would not always be there to gather and pray as family. If you have sent the children to like the boarding house, you will not call them from there in the morning to come and pray. So there's room to encourage every person to develop a personal altar. As you pray, your wife should pray, your children should learn to pray on their own. Then there's the time you come together for everybody and there's a time we need to share deepest pains. Sometimes in the time of family prayers, we bring individual prayers that affects us as husband or wife or children. Now, ever increasing emotional intimacy, getting more and more open to each other, standing together through challenges and bearing one another's burden. We need to be more and more close to each other. We need to... to if the husband is washing clothes or wife is washing clothes, the, the husband can go and help hang. It won't make you look like woman rapper in the neighborhood. But to some people that understand intimacy, they would, they would even applaud you, ah, that this woman, is, this man is a gentleman. Not the traditional thinking that, ah, how will you expect that? I, some men cannot even buy, I remember a man just go and buy fuel gas cylinder for the wife. He started raking. Now that is like sending me in the village to go, to go to bush and fetch firewood for you. That, that is an aberration, you know? These things we do and think we are traditional, it, it, it doesn't keep us together. So those little, little things we do to assist each other go a far way to help. Standing together, bearing each other's burden. When your wife is in pains, when your husband is in pains, there are some pains that are so personal. The man is having pains in his immediate family. You need to stand with him or the woman. Or the man is having pains in his office or the woman in her business or her office. You need to stand and bear that burden and share and make her on him or her understand that you share that pain he's carrying through with you now number seven continuous and increasingly engage in the principle of sowing and reaping as husband and wife we must cultivate the habit of sowing and reaping it is very very important i remember an in-law complained he called and complained now to my wife tell your sister let I tell her husband you people need to be paying do you pay your tithe i ask some pertinent questions do you pay your tithe you know, when the woman went to share with the husband, uh, I said, uh, that one is uh, pastor's shade. You should leave that one. What do you have? You can. You know, but these are fundamental spiritual principles of growing the family finances in particular. If we want to grow our finances, one secret is that we must learn to sow as a family, husband and wife, or entire family. Sometimes we sow seed even for our children while they are in school. During Thanksgiving service, maybe the child is, on, is in the boarding house or on campus, he's not here, he's abroad. You can come and sow a seed on his behalf, a Thanksgiving seed, a protection seed, whatsoever seed, for the Lord to protect him wherever he or she is. Then the last one, we must continuously work out what makes for increase. Now, I'm talking about physical increase, financial increase, material increase. In, Pro in Proverbs 22, 29, the Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings and not mean men. So the family must be encouraged to work hard. Father, mother, children. The family must learn to be intimate in all we do. Praise the Lord. I, I thought we would put our hands together for the Lord. Those were very, very wonderful ones. The Lord bless you, sir. God bless you, man. All right, I want to quickly ask a question. I am a woman and I'm married to a man. Oh, we have been hearing this kind of thing. The man should be helping the woman. And I'm trying my best as a woman. Uh, mommy, what do you think I can do? What's your advice for me? What can, how, how 
do I go about it to encourage this man to start helping me? Is there anything I can do? Praise the Lord. In, in, in a Christian home, let me use them for example. For the marriage to work, both man and the woman are involved. They are to work it out. So we don't allow the man to bear the burden alone. If that's your question, sir, how can I help the man? I am talking about maybe house chores and things like that. The man, my husband is not used to it at all. He did not come from that kind of... Uh, but you see, we have been coming to the church and we have been hearing needs that uh, uh, husband be helping your wife in... Uh, but this man is trying, uh, he's trying his best. Uh, but when it comes to something like our daddy had just talked about, he does not believe in helping me at all. What do you think I can do, man? As a woman, what do I do? If Because traditionally aside from Christians, some men will tell you in my village, men don't sweep, men don't wash plates. It is forbidden for a man to do the house choice. It's the duty of the wife. But we are not looking at it like that. We are seeing it from the point of a Christian home. We are not traditionalists. So a, as a woman, I will encourage my husband in any possible way I can by not taking advantage on him when he's helping me out because most of the times if the wife the man decides to say okay let me assist my wife in washing the dishes i should not as a woman see it as uh, uh, is your is your right don't you know didn't they say it in church that men should help out i should not see it as and uh, because the man did not do it or because he's not doing it i will not relax that is the time you have to you know encourage him the more you know appreciate him the more thank him the more even let him know that he's the best husband in the world and you walk into the house and see everywhere is so tidy like for example let me give my own as an example i just walked into the bedroom i saw everywhere was sparkling and i've been so lazy so tired recently i could not even wash it and when i said my husband have washed everywhere and it was so you know I cannot fail to appreciate him, to encourage him, to even thank him. Ah, you are too much. You are good. God bless you. Ah, thank you. But, but some women, they see it. Is it not your right? Am I the only one using the bedroom? Are you not the one also using the bedroom? Eh, hey, wash it now. Or you now see it as it's his duty. Uh, Daddy, wash today. Tomorrow I wash. Anything at all. Even going to the market. You know, I enjoy it more when my husband goes to the market to buy things. Because there are things I will not want to buy. I will feel the money is too much. He will buy everything. He will bring it to the house. And when I'm cooking, I'll say, ah, you bought all this fish. You bought all this meat. Ah, you bought it. It's too much now. And I'll sit. I'm appreciating it all. But I was like, I, I wish he can be going to market always. So that I can be saving, you know, even if I have that money, I will not want to buy. You see, we have to encourage them. We want to allow them to see that, yes, even when they are helping out, they are doing it for us. They are doing it for the family but we are seeing it as the best of what they can actually do to make us stand up as a woman and see their role as they are too good and they are too much thank you <laughs> i have to see that the greg at the end of the service today praise the lord i say praise the lord now i want to ask more one more question sir you see, I love my husband so much, too, but he does not buy things for me. We have been hearing about uh, buying gifts for yourselves. I used to, we used to hear it together, but I don't know how to, when we get home, to tell him that, sir, did you hear the message of today? He's not just used to it. What do you think I can do, sir? What I said is that, this man does not buy gifts for me. It's not that he doesn't love me, but that particular aspect is not just used to it. What do you think I can do? Okay, I think uh, because a lot of people just grow up like that, not they are not just so used to it somehow. Now, 
we can trigger the woman can trigger him maybe a lot of reason could be responsible one that he's naturally stingy two that he's not used to that can that lifestyle he's never been told he doesn't even realize he has to do it you know now you can start by embarrassing him first maybe on his birthday you'll be the first to buy something and give him something that will shock him something that will amaze him that he if he has conscience he will be ashamed he will realize that ah I, i've never i've never thought about this and my wife is initiating it because sometimes you just feel as a woman you just be brooding imploding inside just a squeeze just the best just the trouble just the you you know so that is one practical step you can take embarrass him first if he has conscience i can tell you he will be showering you more and more and if you are a stingy woman too stingy to the man you know the most needs of a man you know there are some couples that make it like fun okay you just do i'll give you this money you know you just surprise him the next morning you you are surprised the kind of money the kind of thing is dashing you but if you take uh, conjugal responsibility as one of those routine normal thing you just do it anyhow now i had a boy that came to stay with us some years back his father is very prominent in my wife's area a chief and he was telling us his father's story that do we imagine the father went and married an 18 year old a very young girl and what was his complaint say his mother he was gonna just like that just you know but that she got an 18 year old like david in the bible who would massage him and make him feel like a human being who would make him feel life you know sometimes as women we just feel uh, we, are, we have outgrown those things those are some of the things that will kill a man and he doesn't even raise his mind to think that he should do something no matter the age if you do what you are supposed to do and the man has conscience I tell you, you will trigger his conscience and bring it to life. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sir. So, women, I hope you heard that. If your husband has not been buying things for you, you will begin to buy for him. With that, you are communicating something, and I'm sure you will understand. Okay, we have one question here. Mommy, uh, let me ask the two together. As a single person married to or you're already in courtship you have a an earth issue you don't need to hide it you don't need to shy away from it because even if it is known to you alone now sometimes someday it will be known to everybody or the person you are together or living together i remember one time when we went to female ministers conference at the camp if something like this came up it turned the couple wanted to get married and the guy knew very well that he's not fatal he's, he's uh, how do i say it he's impotent he's sterile or like that and he's, he's trying to go into marriage with a girl and he did not tell her you understand then on the day of the honeymoon then the girl discovered that the man cannot perform what do you think will happen to such marriage that is not what we are talking about so even before then you have to relate with the partner this is my challenge and somebody will ask somebody that is in courtship that is not supposed to go into fornication that is not supposed to indulge in sexual heart how will he know that he does not or he cannot perform that was why he did not say it. that was not an excuse i think medically there are things you should see or must have observed to know that his not body is not capable for such then then this lady that said the testimony from the camp that she discovered that the husband could not perform but because she's involved she came to the camp and with the handkerchief that was prayed on she related took it to the husband and miraculously prayed and wrapped it with the man's organ and it started walking that is a testimony that could happen because the man did not hide it from the lady and they were both involved and god intervened and in the place of prayer when we talk about ever increasing numerically as part of the promises that god have promised a couple or in a marriage 
they were able to fulfill and overcome that challenge. But in the case of those that are already married, and the man you knew there is an ailment, and you are still shy to disclose it to your partner or your spouse, I think that is immaturity on the side of the man or the woman. If you discover you have an ailment, or medically you have a disease, I think the best thing is to disclose it to your partner whether before marriage or you're already in marriage this is how i feel occasionally like so there are kind of symptoms or things you cannot even tell a doctor but you can say it to your spouse i don't believe because the bible said they were both naked and they were not ashamed i don't think there is anything that is too big be it sickness or disease that you cannot tell your partner if you are both married so you can your husband or your wife is the first person that should know about a medically something challenge you should tell and both of you going on your knees and trusting and believing god and having faith in god prayerfully i believe you can get a solution to such situation praise the lord thank you very much ma uh, that was uh, a very perfect answer i only want to chip in this uh, if as unmarried people, unmarried people, if you feel, I know many times uh, ladies are closer to their, to their moms. If you know it's something you can't discuss with your father, you can discuss it with your mom. It's possible that she has even gone through this kind of thing before and she knows the best advice she can give to you as a lady as a man also you can discuss with your father but if you feel you have passed that stage you don't want to go to your parents and begin to if you feel if you feel it's childish to do that then that means you must be matured enough to know the step to take medically now if as an unmarried people you discover that you are going through some things and they are too personal and you don't want to share it with your spouse to be then you must be matured enough to know how to go about it both medically and spiritually uh, i was saying it in the morning i said well uh, most times one of those things that people used to say today that why i don't want to discuss with my pastor is because uh, the last time i discussed with him i had it on the altar and i said well the mere fact that somebody had done that for to you before does not mean every pastor is like that you can discuss with your pastor can pray along with you if you feel that you don't want to do that you should have somebody what i'm trying to say is that don't keep things to yourself especially anything that has to do with your health don't keep it to yourself don't keep it to yourself seek for counsel the bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety i think we'll have to draw a curtain to our discussion of today i want to say thank you very much sir and thank you very much ah a question okay let's attend to that one more question thank you for clapping your hands god bless those Hallelujah. hands in jesus name all right, your question, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like what mommy just explained, that if you have a maybe medical problem, you need to um, tell your spouse. I've seen a family that the woman, when she was pregnant of the first child, she was not having any medical problem like HIV. And then when she now got the second pregnancy, though she lost the first child but when she got the second pregnancy they discovered that she had hiv and then she decided to tell her husband ever since the way the husband has been behaving and the way the family has been running it doesn't look beautiful and you can even tell on the woman looking at her you know that ah this man is not suffering from something like this and the man is not doing like this behaving anyhow to the woman would it have been right for the woman not to tell her husband? Oh, I don't know.
Praise the Lord. You know, like in most uh, marriage council, one of the key things that will be brought, one key ingredients is trust and transparency. If it is built from the beginning, that doubt will not be there. Trust, transparency, and knowledge. Now, it's evident that HIV is not communicated through sex alone. There are so many other avenues. So a man of understanding, a man of trust, that knows his wife cannot cheat on him, will not behave that way. The problem is when that foundation was not there, if there had been any reason to, to create doubts, that's where you have those problems. I remember having a, a, a similar problem like that. I told my wife first, my workers were like, how will you tell your wife such a thing? Will she not suspect you? I said, no. And thank God for the experience nurse we had in the field location I was working. And we talked about it. They say, have you reported to the doctor? I said, no. And when I went to the doctor, the man asked me one question. That's why experience is very key. He said, are you on any medication? I said, yes. He said, name them. The moment I named tetracycline, he said, that's the culprit. He said, there are people that have this similar reaction with this drug. Discontinue it for the next two days. That situation will clear. And just like that experienced nurse said it, for the next two days it cleared. My wife had no cause for doubt, even though I was far away home in a very immorally decayed environment we walk in. So when trust is there, there is no room for doubt. The man or the woman will believe his spouse. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sir. Trust is one of the very powerful pillars of any marriage. If trust is there, it doesn't matter what happens. Your wife travels for a long time, the trust is still there. Your husband travels to anywhere, the trust is still there. And one thing about this thing is that even as years go by, the trust keeps on becoming stronger and stronger. I pray the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want us to do something. Let's all arise on our feet. I want us to pray prayer for our families. We have celebrated the, uh, the family weekend. And the Almighty God has been blessing us since Thursday. I want you to say a word of prayer to your family and say father in the name of jesus what you meant my family to be heavenly father let it be so in jesus name establish your kingdom more and more in my family in the name of jesus please pray that prayer for yourself pray for your own family pray for every family in this church heavenly father establish your kingdom more and more in our families in this church in jesus name let the joy of the lord keep on increasing let the peace of god be in our families in the name of jesus uh i want to hear you praying and god wants to hear you praying please pray pray for yourself and use your family your own family as a point of contact to every family in this church father bless our families in jesus name let your kingdom be established more and more in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we have prayed i want you to pray whatever the enemy has stolen out of my family today let there be divine restoration in jesus name oh yeah raise your voice and pray for yourself whatever the enemy has stolen out of my family anything that the enemy has stolen out of my family father today let there be divine restoration restoration of joy restoration of peace in the name of jesus restoration of the righteousness of god in the name of Jesus, Lord, every family that is represented in this church, ancient of days, whatever the enemy has stolen from our families, Father, restore today. Restore today, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray for all our brothers, our sisters that are trusting the Lord to get married. 
who are trusting the Lord to have the bone of their bones. Pray for them and say, Father, please make a way for them. In the name of Jesus. Is anybody praying here this morning? Please pray for them. Say, Father, these ones, they will not go the wrong direction. In the name of Jesus. Every relationship that will destroy their destinies. Lord, separate them from it in the name of Jesus. Separate them from every such relationship that will destroy their destinies. In the name of Jesus. Ancient of this, the bone of their bones. Father, let them locate them. In the name of Jesus, bring them together in a divine way, in a supernatural way. Let there be a divine connection between them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Pray for more of the blessings of the Almighty God. Blessings physical, blessings spiritual, blessings all around upon all our families in this church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, let your blessings come heavily, mightily upon all our families. In the name of Jesus thank you heavenly father glory be to your holy name in jesus mighty name we have prayed ah it's only the minister that i'm hearing their amen. amen church i say in jesus name we are prayer god bless you anytime we do something like this we usually celebrate we usually say thank you to the lord we saw it we celebrated it last year we have been able to celebrate it this year again uh, I want you to pick something that you will use to say thank you to the Lord while the choir will sing for us. Please do that. Joyfully come before the Lord. Say, Lord, on behalf of my family, I have come to say thank you to you. I did it last year. I've been able to see it this year. And I'm thanking you because I know you will spare our lives to be able to celebrate it next year again. Glory be to God. Choir, please. Everybody, please come. Come to the front. Let's celebrate together. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the owner of my soul. service uh, thank you for putting your hands together for them the Lord has prepared them mightily and it's going to be a very very wonderful time in the presence of God uh, on the last Sunday like that the church used to feed people so 
please use the opportunity to invite people. Tell them that they should come. As they eat spiritual food, they will also eat physical food. At the end of the second service, food will be available to feed the people. I announced during the first service as well that those who want to attend Mommy Kufri's father's burial is this weekend. Please see the secretary and register with them before there will not be the opportunity again. There are two buses and the buses are free. Uh, this coming Tuesday, by the special grace of God, uh, our Father and the Lord, who is representative of, of Daddy Gio, will be taking us on doctrinal teaching. It's something that every minister, every worker must not miss. All members as well. Let's be there. Because these are the things that, that make us to understand what our doctrines in the redeemed Christian church of God. Please don't miss it. Five o'clock on Tuesday. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Father, once again, we are grateful that you have spared our lives to be able to celebrate the family weekend of this year again. Thank you for all the men in the church. Thank you for all the women in the church. Thank you for all children, all the youth, all, all the teenagers and our children. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that you spared our lives to be alive today to see and to celebrate. Lord, we are grateful unto you. Thank you for your word that you have sent to us. Father, please accept our praises in Jesus' name. I pray for every family here and every family that is represented in this church. All challenges in your family, beginning from today, they are over in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, if there is anything the enemy has programmed for, the, for your family, today, I have I used the blood of Jesus and I nullify it in the name of Jesus. Whatever the word of the enemy that has been spoken concerning your family, I decree and declare it will never stand in the name of Jesus. Beginning from this time, your family will begin to move from glory to higher level of glory in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bless you mightily in the name of Jesus and it shall be well within Jesus' name. Whatever you are trusting the Lord for, the Almighty God will do it for you in a multiple fold in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have celebrated this year again. By this time next year, let our testimonies be greater than this in our different families in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This little offering we have brought to say thank you. We sanctify with the blood of Jesus. We pray and use this offering as a point of contact to all the finances of every family. We will not lack anything that is good for us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace of the Lord together and fellowship the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. To your family say surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us in my family all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and somebody will say bigger amen. amen let me hear you shout a big hallelujah Amen. Please walk us that came late last Sunday and today. Walk us.